Hello everyone. We see different kinds of animals in our environment every day. In the previous video we talked about how to divide all animals into categories. Amphibians are one of these unique groups. Today we will talk about some special facts about these animals. Amphibians are ectothermic and tetrapod vertebrate species that can live in water as well as on land. So they can live on land and in water. The frog is an example of an amphibian. The frog can live in both water and land. On land, frogs breathe with the help of their lungs, and frogs in the water breathe through their moist skin. Animals that can live in water and on land are called amphibians. The majority of amphibian species undergo metabolic processes, which means that they begin to live in water but can fully survive on land as they mature. The vast majority of amphibians live on land as adults. The amphibian class includes frogs, toads, salamanders and Sicilians. The total number of amphibians identified worldwide is about 7,000, of which about 90% are frogs. They were the first land-dwelling vertebrates, but they were close to water to lay their eggs. Amphibians are considered the connecting link between fish and reptiles. The smallest living amphibian is the Papua New Guinea frog Pedophrina maensis, which grows to about 7 mm in length. Also considered as the smallest vertebrate. The Chinese salamander is currently the largest amphibian in the world, measuring approximately 1.8 meters in length. Most amphibians can stay in the water for the rest of their lives. Some want to come out for a variety of reasons, such as eating and having sex. Amphibians have four respiratory organs. One moisturized skin. Oxygen dissolved in water can pass through the amphibian's thin moist skin and enter its body. 2. Oral cavity. They use it when they are in the water. 3. Lungs. Amphibians use it when in the terrestrial environment. 4. Giles. Young amphibians use it when in the water. Most amphibians breathe through the lungs and skin. They keep their skin moist by secreting mucus, which helps them absorb oxygen through the skin. Dry skin makes them difficult to breathe and can even cause death. Oxygen is absorbed through the blood vessels on the surface of the skin, circulating oxygen to other parts of the body. Do amphibians have the ability for scent? However, they do have the ability to smell. There are external openings in the upside of the mouth for this and it causes various odors. Most amphibians have teeth. But, they do not have teeth like other carnivores and herbivores. There are only teeth set just to catch prey. The teeth used to chew are not located because the whole prey is swallowed after catching a prey. Amphibians are cold-blooded and depend on the surrounding environment to regulate their internal temperature. Mammals and birds are currently the only warm-blooded animals on Earth. During the rainy season we see many frogs because they prefer moist to dark environments. After a steady rain, the area is usually cloudy, cool and humid. This means that the animal has the right conditions to navigate without drying out. There are many amphibians that hibernate after the rainy season is over. Amphibians do not like high temperatures. At the end of the day, they hide in mud, rocks, or similar wet and cool dark places at the bottom of the water. They stay in that place until the next rainy season. This period of their life is called hibernation. Whenever we think of venomous animals we think of snakes and tarantulas. Most snakes have similar or more venomous frogs. Only some amphibian species are poisonous. It is well known that venomous frogs have been used by Native Americans for thousands of years to poison their arrows. Toxic brightly colored amphibians are often active even during the day. They repel predators by their bright colors. Amphibians seem to eat all the animals that can swallow smaller than themselves. For example, it swallows ants, flies, small birds, oysters, spiders, rats, fish and other small creatures. Amphibians play a vital role in controlling insect populations. So I believe we learned a lot about these special animals and their special features. See you in another similar program. Have a nice day.